Greetings, my friends. Welcome to my new series of realistic railway recreations made with Transport Fever 2. My last series was set on the Metropolitan Railway at its outermost parts, north of Aylesbury, around 1900. In this series, I recreate the present-day Metropolitan Line, now, of course, part of London Transport, from Harrow to its termini at Uxbridge, Watford, Amersham, and today's destination, Cheshire. We shall be travelling through the heart of Metroland, a string of towns and suburbs created because the Met went through there. I've lived in this part of London nearly all my life and travelled on the Met over many years. This is a one-to-one -one scale recreation and the railways, roads and topography of hills and rivers is accurate. However, there are limits as to what can be done with Transport Fever 2. I've put some comments about this in the description. We begin today at Harrow-on-the-Hill Station, first built in 1880 and expanded and rebuilt since. This is the main hub of the railway. Drivers start and stop shifts here and it is an interchange with the Chiltern Line, which goes from Marylebone to Aylesbury sharing the Met's tracks from Harrow to Amersham, where the Met stops and the lines cease to be electrified, and our train has just pulled in on Platform 1. The Met is unique on the London Underground system for having fast or express trains, which it can do because the tracks are quadrupled between Wembley Park and Moor Park. For these reasons, Harrow has six platforms. Today we'll travel on a fast train from platform one, which is only used by Chilton trains and the fast Met trains. In a later video, we shall stop at all stations, which will give me more time to talk about them. Lifts and a footbridge over the platforms have very recently been added to the station, and I have made an approximation of them. I want to zoom in a little bit, and you can have a look. Here's the new footbridge and the entrance to the booking hall. Um, I've not yet had a chance to go on that footbridge. Well, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I will say more about the town of Harrow in later videos, but it is worth noting that in recent years it has changed more than any other town served by the Met. Start our train, get into the cab view, forward of the cab and we should be off in a moment. We're looking here at Harrow Town Centre. Used to be uh, two-storey Edwardian Victorian buildings all being pulled down and replaced by shopping malls, office blocks and increasingly flats where the offices have remained empty. Some of them have never been occupied since they were built. Once we get going, we'll be travelling at 60 miles an hour, which is the maximum speed allowed north of Harrow. And to our right, we're looking at um, in, in what is now an industrial area, uh, but used to be the old Harrow goods yards. And to our left, the suburb of West Harrow, which uh, appeared almost as soon as Harrow on the Hill Station was opened. Uxbridge branch going away there on our left. We'll travel on that in a later video. And here you can see the quadruple tracking of the Metropolitan Line. We're on the fast down line, the fast up line to our right, and then two tracks further to our right for the stopping train. West Harrow uh, turns into North Harrow. You've got the, you just see there, the um, tower of St Albans Church. And we're passing North Harrow Station. Um, I lived in a street very close to this station for a number of years, so I know it extremely well.
North Harrow shades imperceptibly into Pinner. North Harrow didn't really exist till the railway came through it. It was just a tiny hamlet called Hooking Green. But Pinner is an ancient medieval village. Nice place to visit. Uh, I was born very, very close to Pinner. And uh, we'll go through it again, as I say, on a stopping train on the way to a visit. Nice view there of the new lift. And behind the station, very quick glance of the church. And it sits on the River Pin, we just crossed the Pin, but you can't see it from here because it's uh, in a comfort. Tesco supermarket. This is an area called Pinner Green, another of these little hamlets that existed all by itself until the railway came along and is now just part of Pinner. And we are crossing now um, out of the London Borough of Harrow, where we've been since we started, into the London Borough of Hillingdon and the district of Northwood Hills, a place so empty that when the railway came here there was no name for it at all. It used to be just common land, part of the ancient manor of Ricelet. So they had a newspaper competition and someone came up with the idea of Northwood Hills. I went to school here and travelled from Preston Road to Northwood Hills every day for nearly six years. Once we get past Northwood Hills station, countryside begins to open up a little. And if we turn to our left, we're looking up at Haste Hill, there are golf courses, there's the ancient Ricelip Woods, which have been there since uh, in some cases since the uh, Ice Age, and behind them is the Ricelip Edo, which I'll talk a bit more about when we visit Ricelip on our trip to Uxbridge. The Iron Bridge, gateway to Northwood. Northwood, a mere hamlet, when uh, the railway came here, now a very large, prosperous town. And to our right, the old Northwood sidings, which I don't think they use them anymore. I think they were last used when the A60 stock, the predecessor to the S stock trains that we're currently riding in, were all brought here to be broken up in around the year 2010-2011. coming to the edge of Northwood, the edge of the London Borough of Hillingdon, and we're coming in right out of Greater London altogether into Hertfordshire and into the area served by Three Rivers Council. And the Three Rivers are the Colne, which is the main river, which runs um, across our path, you'll see it in a minute, down to the River Thames, the River Gade, which comes down from St Albans and is accompanied much of the way by the Grand Union Canal and the lovely River Chess, which we'll see a bit more of as we get closer to Chesham. But right now we're approaching and stopping at Moor Park. Originally this was called Sandy Lodge. Sandy Lodge is the name of the golf club to our right, which you can't see because of the trees. And uh, to our left is a very large private estate, so private that Google Street View is not allowed in. So I haven't bothered to try to recreate it. A nice car park though, which of course used to be the goods yard, as is the case with pretty well all the car parks on this line. As we leave War Park Station, uh, you will see that we pass Merchant Taylor's School. Oh, there's a Chilton Line train here. Chilton Line trains don't stop. That's gone straight through, straight through, past the station. Um, but the Met trains, uh, fast trains, stop here as their first stop from Harrow. This is the last chance to interchange for the Watford branch, which will be leaving us shortly. 
Merchant Taylor's School, as I was saying, uh, occupies the property to our left and a huge sports fields and facilities to our right. I've put some of them in, but you don't get much of a view of them from the railway. All of this land, I think, to the right is part of the school. And that's my attempt to build the school. I know I haven't got it right. We are approaching the first of our three rivers. This actually is the River Colne, and it uh, flows through a rather lovely landscape onto the Thames. Industrial estates to our right, all the way from here to Watford. And here's the River Gade, which meanders past us and the Grand Union Canal which of course goes straight past us. Very good timing with the train coming from Watford and Watford tracks go off to our right on what is called the South Curve and of course now we're down to two tracks and there's another connection to Watford which we're about to come up to called the North Curve which connects Watford to Ripmansworth but they um, very rarely use it. Ahead of us, the Ripmansworth South sidings. The sidings were extensively used at Ripmansworth between 1925 and 1961 because at that time electrification had reached no further north of the UK and the electric trains would come out from Baker Street, take off the electric locos here, and the steam locomotive uh, would come out of the sidings and take the train onwards to Amersham and to Amersham or to Cheshire. Although having said that, most of the Cheshire trains were a shuttle service, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. We're coming to Rickmansworth, just past the street that goes down to Rickmansworth, my street. Rickmansworth still has its uh, original water tower from the days of steam. And unfortunately, because Transport Fever 2 does not support curved stations, um, the station isn't really facing the right way. We should be bending around and facing that large building that you can see to our right. So the path of the railway here is not quite the right path, but we'll get back onto it very shortly. Crossing the A404, this road now runs parallel to us all the way up to Amersham. And you can see here the tracks going off into the Rickmansworth North sidings. I think they use Rickmansworth South still to stable trains sometimes, but I don't think the North sidings are used very much these days. This area is extremely built up, but fortunately we're running in cuttings now because we're beginning our long climb up into the Chilterns, which means we don't see very much. Therefore, I don't have to model it. There are sort of ghost bridges on the Met. This is one of them, uh, bridges which don't actually go anywhere. They're hangovers, perhaps from the days when the railway first came through here, and access had to be provided for farmers. enough trains on this layout to more or less simulate the peak hour services. Now, coming up to the real boundary, some would say, of London, this is the M25. The 
Metropolitan Railway uh, came to Rittensworth around about 1887. Rittensworth was an obvious target once they had got to Harrow. But then they pushed on uh, northwestward, um, coming up to Chorley Wood, which at the time they got here was little more than about 40 cottages in a couple of streets. Um, I know that because I've counted them from the Ordnance Survey map. Now Chorley Wood is another of these large um, suburban commuter towns. We don't see much of it because it's all on the left, hidden behind trees and somewhat below the level of the railway. The original Chorley Wood is to the right. Um, we'll see that as we we'll see the streets comprise it as we leave the station. It's got a lovely old signal box, and I've made the station look rather quaint. It doesn't really look like this. It is quite hard to simulate a metropolitan railway station. In Transport Fever 2, we are entirely reliant and really on the mods. One or two odd graphic effects that some objects flicker in and out of sight as you're very close to them, like that station effects. There was a line of old buildings along this lane and some of the old houses from the original children on this lane and the street which I have laid out to the right, although I haven't bothered to put any more buildings on it. To the left is Northern Chorley Wood, the shopping centre and so on. Again, I've only done sketchiest of outlines of it. And there is one very long street that follows us up to our left, which you will catch the old glimpses of through the trees. And to our right is the open space of Chorleywood Common. next stop is going to be Chalfont and Latimer. Uh, there is no such place as Chalfont and Latimer. There's a village of Latimer, nearly a mile north of the railway, situated in the Chess Valley. And there are the substantial villages of Chalfont St Giles and Chalfont St Peter, um, which are a mile or two in the other direction to the south, which is our left. And they sort of stuck to station in the middle of this little cluster of villages. The Met got here around about 1889, and the idea then was that the line should go on to Chesham, and from Chesham they wanted to go on to Tring and link up with the London North Western Railway, which would help make the Met a truly national railway. That plan fell through. At exactly that time, they were able to acquire the Aylesbury and Buckingham Railway, um, about which I've said quite a lot in my previous series of videos on the Met in 1900. So they abandoned the plan to go to, to make Chesham a sort of through station, turned it into a terminus and just and indeed a branch line because the main line extended from Chalfont uh, onto Amersham and onto Aylesbury instead. So Chalfont has a rather unusual layout because it's got standard two platforms and it's got an additional bay platform from which the services to Chesham used to run and they normally ran a, a shuttle service completely disconnected from the other services running on the Met. However, that all ended around right about 2010, and now all services to Cheshire run on the main line, just like all the other trains. The bay platform is no longer used. We're coming into Chelford Latin Station now. The bay platform used for the shuttle is on our right, and what will happen is when we leave the station, we will switch over to the single track line that goes to Cheshire. left the main railway. We'll follow it for about a mile before peeling off. And this section of the railway is limited to a speed of 35 miles an hour. 
which is probably not necessary on this section, which is engineered as well as the rest of the railway. But as soon as we turn off, you will understand why it's necessary to limit the speed. There's a huge ribbon of development either side of the railway. The A404 runs to our left, parallel with us all the way to Amersham. Uh, this entire area used to be relatively open countryside. I can recall it being fairly open when I was younger, but now it's, it's built up. It's housing estates, um, residential homes, and a lot of light industry as well on both sides of the railway. <coughs> I've put some of it in. I haven't filled in all of the detail yet. Chilton southbound service. Chilton line trains stop at uh, Amersham, uh, Chalfont, and uh, Chorleywood and Rickensworth, just like the Met. Here's where we turn off towards Chesham, past this large industrial estate. of the railway here based on cab view shots of the line uh, and it looks to me as though at this point they thought the line was going to be double tracked because the track bed is certainly wide enough to support it but later on it seems to be just wide enough for single track so I've no idea if it was ever double tracked or not I can't find any references to it coming up to about the highest point of our journey through the Chiltern Hills and to the right the view opens up to the Chess Valley. There'll be a better view in a moment. Another ghost bridge but it's, it is used for a footpath. And let's just turn the camera around and we'll have a nice shot down the valley of the River Chess. It flows down from here towards Rickmansworth. It's a, a pure chalk stream. Uh, the water is so pure they used to grow watercress here and the runway made it possible then to ship it to London without any delay. To our left you've got a lovely woody open country but don't be deceived because there are a lot of new housing estates being built, or that have been built, just out of our uh, eye shot. So here's some of those new suburbs on our left. And on the right, there's water treatment plants uh, <coughs> used in the chess. And more developments you can see over the hill onto the right. Despite the housing, it's still a lovely view. The section 
section of track from Chalfont to Chesham is just under four miles long. To our left, there's a very large uh, commercial plantation growing trees. Uh, ignore the bear, which transport fever too, since it's very funny to plonk down at random on these sorts of maps. Um, there's the plantation. We're coming up into Chesham proper. Quite a bit of industry on the edge of the town. The River Chess actually passes under the railway round about here. And we're, we're curving round for the final approach to the station. To our right, or ahead of us, it's quite a steep hill, and there's a footpath crosses the railway, and it is so steep, uh, you'll see the bridge that carries it over the railway in a second. It's called Jacob's Ladder. And there it is. Not an easy thing to model. We are coming into Chesham Station. The station used to have more facilities than it has now. It had uh, a platform that was in use to the left of the platform we're coming in on, and it had a track to our right which was used as the runaround for locomotives. But it still has its original water tower and it has a lovely old signal box. And of course, straight ahead of us, we have a car park built in what used to be uh, the goods yard. Well, that's the end of our journey on the Metropolitan Line today. A little glimpse of the rooftops of Chesham, the other side of the platform. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like, please leave me a comment, and subscribe if you want to keep in touch with the channel. Thank you. Goodbye.